Hey everyone, Lee Burkhardt here and welcome to our online video channel. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Nauticam housing for the Alexa 35 cinema camera and discussing the installation procedure. We also want to give a big shout out to our friends over at AE Productions, who were kind enough to allow us to use their studio space and camera for the making of this video. Now, if you're not familiar with these guys, they're a one-stop shop for all of your production needs. They can handle everything from pre and post production, rental equipment, filming, and much more. Be sure to check out their page and social channels in the video description below. Now as for today's video, we're going to break this down into several categories for you. So be sure to see our timeline notes in the video description below if you want to skip to a specific section. The housing is designed with the owner operator in mind, and honestly the setup really couldn't be any easier on this. In fact, you can set up the entire cinema system in just under 10 minutes. To get started, you'll want to first begin by attaching the left, right, and top handles. Ensure the handle locking mechanism is set to the release position. Slide the handles into place in the housing to a location of your preference. Then turn the handle locking mechanism clockwise into the lock position. Use this same process for all three handles. First, we'll talk about the single operator installation. For this process, you'll need an Allen key set, the bottom plate, the left side module, the right side module, the focus control assembly, the iris control assembly, and the zoom control assembly. You'll want to start by removing the front port assembly. You'll find three locking latches along the top and sides of the housing. Simply depress the red button and flip each locking latch all the way up into the unlock position. Then remove the front port assembly. Move the camera tray lever to the release position and pull the tray out of the housing from the front. You'll find an Allen key built into the tray. Using the Allen key, bolt the tray onto the top of the Alexa 35. Next, bolt on the bottom plate. the left side module, and the right side module to the camera using the integrated Allen screws found on each module and plate. With the tray and side modules attached, you'll need to bolt on the bottom lens control assemblies. Starting with the focus control assembly shown here, Push the focus control assembly into place on the upper right side of the right side module. Then thread both of the Allen screws found on the focus control assembly into the right side module to secure it in place. Next grab the iris control assembly shown here. Push the iris control assembly into the right side of the bottom plate. Then thread both of the Allen screws found on the iris control assembly into the bottom plate to secure it in place. Lastly, if you're using a zoom lens, grab the zoom control assembly shown here. Push the zoom control assembly into the left side of the bottom plate. Then thread both of the Allen screws found on the zoom control assembly into the bottom plate to secure it in place. With the lens control assemblies attached, you'll need to attach the 15mm rod to the iris and zoom control assemblies. Loosen the thumb tabs found on the left and right side of the bottom plate by rotating them counterclockwise. Pull the 15mm rod out from each side of the bottom plate. Align the 15mm rod to the gearing found on the iris and zoom control assemblies. Then rotate the same thumb tabs found on the bottom plate clockwise to secure the 15mm rod into place. Next align the gearing on each lens control assembly onto the focus, 
iris, and zoom gearing found on the lens. Then secure the gearing on each control assembly into place on the lens by rotating the ratcheted thumb tabs and the two thumb screws found on each control assembly clockwise. There are additional Nauticam drive shaft extensions included with your housing package, and these are stackable, allowing you to extend the drive shafts if you're using a longer lens. You'll also find a support rod holder bracket for the focus and iris control assemblies inside your kit. We do recommend attaching this when using longer cinema lenses with the drive shaft extensions. To install the drive shaft extensions, simply insert them, and then using an Allen key, turn the Allen screw found inside the drive shaft extension clockwise to secure each drive shaft in place. With the lens installed, perform a quick function test using the focus, iris, and zoom gearing found along the lens control assemblies to ensure everything's working properly. Now that the camera is all assembled, carefully guide the camera into the front of the housing and push it all the way in. Then move the camera tray lever back into the locked position. If you're using a longer lens and are unable to attach the front port assembly due to the length of the lens control assemblies extending from the front of the housing, you can use the Nauticam housing extension found with your kit. It also operates just the same as the front port assembly, with three locking latches found along the tops and sides of the housing extension and is installed between the front port assembly and the housing. This combined with the lens control assembly shown earlier means that the lens choices for this housing are virtually limitless. To reattach the front port assembly, ensure all three locking latches along the tops and sides are pulled all the way out into the unlocked position. Carefully place the front port assembly back onto the housing, and then move each locking latch on the front port assembly back into the lock position. To attach the dome port, move the port lever found on the housing to the release position. Align the white dot on the extension ring to the white dot on the housing. Push the port into place, and then move the port lever back into the lock position to secure it in place on the housing. Once you're finished with the camera tray and lens assembly, you'll need to install the monitor. Nauticam includes several M16 bulkhead openings along the top of the housing for routing an SDI connection to external monitors, such as the Atomos Shinobi, Atomos Ninja 5, Small HD 503 Ultra Bright, Small HD 502 Bright, and the new Small HD Ultra 5 monitors. For help with installing any of these monitors onto the housing, you'll find a link below in the video description with the detailed installation guide. To open the rear of the housing, depress the red button on the rear housing latch, and then rotate the housing latch counterclockwise to open the rear door. You'll notice from the rear you have direct access to the B mount batteries, media cards, and rear inputs and outputs on the camera for connecting whatever you need without having to remove the camera from the housing. To close the rear housing door, just swing the door back towards the rear door housing latch and rotate the latch clockwise to secure the door in place. With the camera, lens control assemblies, and ports attached, you'll want to turn on the leak detection and vacuum check electronic switch. Open the rear housing door and flip the leak and vacuum electronic switch to on. Nauticam's moisture alarm electronics are included along with the vacuum electronic system. This provides some peace of mind that you've assembled the entire kit properly and it's safe to dive before you even enter the water. For instructions on using the pre-check vacuum test, please see our tutorial in the video description below. To get started with this installation, you'll need an Allen key, a crescent wrench, the Nauticam 16223 LCS cable, 
Nauticam 16247 bulkhead if you're using the WC4 remote, or the Nauticam 16249 LBUS cable and bulkhead if you're using the Hi5 remote. C-Force motors, for this guide we'll be using three of the C-Force mini motors. You can also use the C-Force Plus motors as well, but only two can fit in the housing along the two upper 15mm rod supports. Three RE LBUS cables for the motors, and either the RE WCU4 remote or the Hi5 remote. You'll want to follow the exact same steps mentioned earlier in this video for the single operator installation, but skip the step for attaching the lens control assemblies and instead use the following instructions for assembling the motors, remote, and cabling. After you've assembled the camera tray, attach the two motor control assemblies shown here to the upper area of the right and left side modules using the integrated Allen screws and Allen key. Loosen the butterfly clamps found on the C-Force mini motors by turning them counterclockwise. Slide each of the C-Force mini motors onto each of the 15mm rods found on the motor control assemblies. Align each C-Force mini motor with the focus, iris, and zoom gearing found on the lens. And then secure them in place by turning the butterfly clamp found on each motor clockwise. Next you'll need to plug in the L-Bus cables. These can be arranged in any order. Just ensure that one end is plugged into the LBUS input found on the front of the camera, and the other end to one of the C-Force motors. The remaining two LBUS cables can be plugged into the remaining two motors and daisy chained to the first motor that's plugged into the camera. With all of the motors now installed, remove one of the M16 bulkhead caps found near the front of the housing by turning the cap counterclockwise using a flathead screwdriver. With the cap removed, install the bulkhead by rotating the bulkhead clockwise into the M16 opening using your hands. Then use a crescent wrench to tighten the bulkhead into place. Next, connect the LBUS cable found at the end of the bulkhead to the LBUS input found on the camera. Connect the surface feed cable to the bulkhead you just installed, and rotate the metal collar clockwise to secure the cable in place. Then connect the other end of the surface cable into either your Hi5 or WCU4 remote. Next, follow the instructions with your ARIA remote to calibrate each of the lens gears. Once the calibration is completed, perform a quick function test to ensure each of the motors are working properly. Both the Hi5 and WCU4 remote provide remote control over focus, iris, and zoom. In addition, you have direct access to many of the camera settings directly through the remotes as well. Once you've completed your function test, finish the installation using the exact same procedures mentioned earlier in our single operator installation. Now, if you liked today's video, you'd like to see more content like this from us, or if you're just curious in learning more about underwater imaging, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons found just below the video here. Of course, feel free to leave any questions in the comments section below, or just contact our staff directly. And to check out more of our other articles, videos, and content, you can visit our website and just click on the Learn tab found along the top of the homepage. Well, I think that's going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more cool content to come soon, and we'll see you on the next one.